to earn your property adjuster certificate recognized by a growing list of IA firms and get everything you need to get started as an independent property adjuster, go to adjustertv.com slash path. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through setting up your adjuster camera for running claims and show you my fast workflow for importing and labeling photos in Xactimate. Starting now. This is Adjuster TV. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV, and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. Click on the bell notification so you'll never miss a video. Want to know how you can survive your first ever storm deployment? Check out the How to Survive Your First Storm Deployment webinar. Register for free at adjustertv.com slash thrive. All right, let's light this candle. One of the most important pieces of kit you'll use as an independent adjuster is your camera. There's some debate out there on social media on whether it's better to use a snapshot camera or a smartphone or tablet. There are pros and cons to each, of course, but I will always evaluate a tool and a camera as a tool on whether or not it can co contribute to my bottom line. And how do I figure that out? These are the factors that I consider. Number one, is it durable? In other words, how easy is it to break the tool, right? And how long will I be down if I have to go and replace it? Can it stand up to field work? It needs to be heat resistant. Texas is just about as hot as Phoenix in the summer. It needs to be waterproof or at least water resistant and shock resistant. These things get banged around and dropped no matter how careful we are with our stuff. Number two, is it simple to operate? In the case of a camera, do I need a cell data connection or establish a Wi-Fi connection or use cords to get my images into my laptop? Number three, will it contribute to my overall quality level? In other words, will switching to this new tool make my files measurably better from a customer service or QA perspective? Number four, is it something that has multiple uses? This can be a great thing or a not so great thing. Again, with taking photos, if I can just use my phone, then hey, I don't have to buy a camera. The problem is, is that I can't use them at the same time. Again, having worked in Texas in the summertime, my iPhone shuts down if it gets too hot. And if I run out of batteries on my phone, then I can't use it for taking pics or making calls until I get it charged up again. So you can probably guess that I'm all the way in the snapshot camera camp and have been since I started this career back in the late 90s. I've tried using my phone, but it was usually a struggle to get the photos into my laptop at the minimum. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up this cute little Fujifilm camera for claims work and then what my workflow is for getting claims into Xactimate. And finally, just for fun, I'm gonna show you how to organize and label photos as you can see that you shouldn't be taking hours to do this. And I know that some of you are. If you're taking more than an hour to import and label photos on most of your claims, give me a thumbs up in the comments where you're watching this video. And I promise you, this video is not going to be an hour long. Okay, so we have the Fujifilm XP120. Uh, I think the latest version is the 130. This is the main display. On top, we have the power button. as well as movie recording, the shutter on the main display. We have our zoom features, as well as our menu controls. On the right end, we have the main door, which you get into for your battery, which is a rechargeable guy here, as well as SD card. And I've got a four gig SD card in there. And this little guy is shock resistant and waterproof up to 50 feet. So this, I mean, if you're gonna be 50 feet underwater with this thing, you probably have bigger problems. Let's set this little guy up. Turn on the power. And then we select the center menu button and shooting mode. I use auto, it's the simplest. Image size, I'm using a smallest four by three. The absolute smallest you can do is a one by one, which is not gonna really be practical. Um, you could shoot at 16 by nine, but I think for most uh, most applications, four by three is gonna be the best. Um, there's not m much of a uh, quality difference, I think, between those are just different aspect ratios. Image quality is normal, and you can set the date and time here and to the language and silent mode. You can format your memory card here if you want to. Um, frame number, this is going to either make it continuous from when you first start the camera for the very first time. If it's image number one, it's gonna you know, 
five years from now, it'll be image 10,043. Uh, if you do this, every time you turn the camera on, it'll start over from zero or from one. So I believe it on continuous so that when I go to import, nothing gets confused. I have all the beeps turned off pretty much. I keep the shutter sound on just to, just so I have an audible for when I when I get a take a photo. And that's pretty much it. Um, primarily in this menu, uh, when I have this up, when I'm looking at taking photos, I keep the flash off um, unless I'm going to be inside taking p pictures of something um, that I need to flash for. The flash will run the battery down more than anything. You can go for several days taking dozens and dozens, well, really hundreds of pictures with the flash off without any problems. But as soon as you turn the flash on, you can run your battery down in a day easily. So, and don't believe it on, don't put it on auto either because sometimes it'll flash when you don't want it to. So I leave this on suppressed flash. Other than that, that's pretty much it. If you want to review the pictures that you've taken, you press this button. This will show you pictures that you're going to be importing. You can slide through those. And I like to show homeowners pictures of their roof. A lot of people haven't, you know, aren't willing to get on the roof and who can blame them? Um, you can show them hail damage or lack thereof uh, by using this feature. Now, this is why I like to pick a camera that's got a, the biggest screen I can for its size um, so that I can do that, so I can show homeowners photos. And you can also zoom in on these as well using the W, which is wide angle, and T, which is telephoto, which is zoom in, zoom out. And then you can just, this circular thing operates as a uh, left, right, up and down controller as well. So once I have the photos that I want, I'm gonna open this guy up, take out my memory stick, and on my laptop, I have a slot for memory sticks for SD cards. I'm just going to pop that straight in there and then I'll jump into Xactimate. A lot of people, when they import photos into Xactimate, will create a new folder by doing this, going to folder and saying something like Jack Smith. They'll open their SD card. with Jack Smith's thing open and they will go into their card and they'll open up the folder where their pictures are. We want large icons here and they'll grab all these photos and they'll drag them into Jack Smith's folder, right? So there's all Jack Smith's pictures. You know, there's the benefit to doing this is that obviously there is, uh, if something happens to your SD card or you forget and you, you format your SD card, if you have a habit of erasing your SD card every day or every week or whatever, and you forgot to put the photos into Xactimate, well, you've got a backup. The downside is, is that this takes time. And if you don't format your SD card or erase it, you know, every day or every week or periodically, if you just let it fill up, uh, you're always gonna have those pictures on this on your card, right? So this, this particular card right here, I don't even know how many photos it's got on it. This folder, uh, Fujifilm 100 Fuji, has 963 photos on it, okay? That's easily a week or a couple of weeks worth of photos. 101 has 70 pictures in it, right? So I just kept going. Um, it'll automatically restart. This cam particular camera will start making new well, 101, a 102, a 103, all the way up until you run out of disk space on your card. And it takes a while. And I would even say that you could probably go an entire season with one card without, without ever having to put room on it. Uh, but it'll tell you when the card is full. And it's at that point, then you decide that you want to erase it or if you want to just stick a new card in there and, and keep your cards as back, backups. Um, so basically, my objective here is to remove the step of creating a folder for Jack Smith. I don't want to do this um, to be fast. So I'm going to delete that. So I go into Xactimate here and I'm going to pick a totally random 
Mary Poppins. She's got a bunch of claims. And in order to import these photos straight off of the card, I click on images and then I click on load images and then I find my card right there. And then I have 101. Let me grab the photos, Mr. Smith. Well, I guess it's Mary Poppins. Grab these photos and I can select the first one and then hold down the shift key and select this last one and it'll, it'll select all the ones in between the first one I clicked and the last one I clicked. I can also hold down the control button and add them individually like that. And then I can hold down the control button and click them off individually. So if I see that I have duplicates, like I don't want to have this picture in there because I've already got really, you know, these two pictures are going to tell the story. I don't want those two in there. Then I'll, I'll control click those out of there. And this will save me time when I'm organizing and labeling, labeling my photos. And then I'll hit open. So then it imports my photos. So in here, I'm going to organize these photos and label them you can create new folders here and drag and drop your images into those folders. I think that takes time. And when you're looking at, when the, the file reviewer and the desk adjuster later on are looking at the, the final product, they're not gonna see this organization. They're only gonna see how you have these ordered and how you have them labeled. So for this one, I have the risk photo here. This is the risk address. So I'm gonna control click those two photos and I'm going to click on various values under image name and I'm going to type in risk. And then this is the living room. So I'm going to click this one and I'm going to get all the photos that show the living room, which is this one, DSCF 1004 all the way to 1011. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and click 1011 or 1011 right there and it's gonna select all these. I'm gonna click on various values here and type in living room, okay? This is the dining room, dining. And then we have some exterior photos. So this is the left, the left, left overview, and we'll say left elevation. And this is the rear. And this one is the right. Your risk photo counts as your front elevation a lot of the times. Most of the time, if you take a good photo of the, like this. And then we have our crawl space photos. So we have two crawl space photos. I took those out of order because I had, in order to get, the homeowner was leaving for work. So he said, hey, you want to take a look down in the, the crawl space real quick? I was like, yeah. So in the middle of doing this, we went down to the crawl space. I don't want those to be my exterior photos and my crawl space photos to be in the middle of my interior photos. Because you can see here, I've got some, some uh, kitchen photos as well. So I'm going to grab these four photos and I'm going to drag them here. And you see that thing that looks like uh, a little ball with a line underneath it. That's the line that tells me where it, where these pictures are going to uh, fall in. So I let go right there, and you can see now that I've got, well, I have two more exterior pictures here, so these are gonna go in the proper order. Theoretically, we could do these on the exterior ones first, if we did that first. Um, either way, the most important thing is is that these photos go in the same order that your estimate goes in. So if you have the image on the outside and you do the outside first in your estimate, then I probably would would put your exterior photos showing that damage uh, in the same order that your estimate is. Real quick, for my best and most trusted cat adjuster resources, software, and gear, including this camera, go to adjustertv.com slash resources. These photos show no damage, right? So I have my left elevation, my uh, two left elevation photos, my rear and my right. I'm gonna, I can label all of those as no damage without messing up this image label. So I'm gonna click down here under description and I'm gonna type in no damage found at time of inspection. Okay. Now, if I go back and look at these, you'll see that left elevation remains the name, but each one has no damage found at time of inspection. 
okay? Living room. So here's where I'm going to kind of go faster, right? So the living room photo, I'm gonna say overview. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and press N and it's gonna automatically put my cursor here so I can immediately start typing immediately right after I hit Alt N, I can begin typing the, the next label for the next photo without having to put my cursor in there and spend time poking around on the screen. Because anytime that you move the cursor, you're, you're, you're spending time. And it's this, the smallest things, I'm telling you, add up and moving your cursor around the screen is one of the things that will add up significantly for you, right? So this is, we're just gonna call it uh, water damage to flooring, right? I'm gonna hit Alt N and I'm gonna say, I can't really see what that is, but I'm gonna say it's a subfloor damage. Okay, well, this is this demonstration is just to show you how to lay, import, lay, organize and label photos, not really like to, doing any damage evaluation. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time looking close up at these photos, right? So this next picture is also an overview, so we're gonna call it overview. Looking towards kitchen. And this is back door water damage to, uh, we're gonna call that laminate flooring. Uh, this is a overview into foyer. And then this is hall over, we'll call this hall overview, no damage. Um, however, you can put this note in here if you want to. However, the main thing that, that you're gonna say with this photo is, is that the flooring is continuous with the damaged areas in the living room. Okay, because when you, when you, when you, I mean, yeah, you can actually kind of see it right there. I'm gonna double click on this image you can see that the, the flooring's been pulled up here. This is all continuous flooring, okay? Um, a better picture would show that there's a threshold there, but even if there wasn't, this is a closing door, so most carriers are not gonna let you replace flooring into that room. Click back, and this gives me this back to this view, right? So if I click in here, put my cursor down here, um, this is how Alt-N, and Alt-P also, which means previous, Alt-N means next, think of it that way, and Alt-P, means previous, so you can see that I'm going backwards, right? Alt P, Alt P, Alt P. I'm just holding down the Alt key and tapping the P key. Alt N is holding down the Alt key and pressing the N key. This is one of the best shortcuts that there is in Xactimate. All right, so living room, we're gonna call this uh, damage to laminate, spell laminate flooring. And dining. So we'll say this is overview, no damage, however, continuous with living, right? If somebody read this, that would make sense to them. This is uh, pantry detail. So we didn't actually finish labeling these photos, so I'm gonna say this is the kitchen, 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 and that's kitchen island, okay? So this is kitchen. So that just labeled those. I'm going to go back to this one, pantry detail, and I'm going to alt N to this, overview, overview. There's usually a vent on the toe kick uh, somewhere in the kitchen. It's usually underneath the sink. If you can unscrew that, or shine a headlamp for a flashlight or your phone, uh, flashlight or whatever into there, you can stick your camera up on it and take pictures into it. A lot of times there's dust and stuff all over the floor under there and it's hard to see. So you may have to uh, find another way to look underneath the uh, cabinets to see if the flooring goes under there. So, but you need to really do your best to try and get that photo because it can, if it comes back up later on a reinspection and the contractor's saying that they, you know, they've got to tear out all the cabinets uh, whether they do it or not uh, before they make this call. And sometimes they will do it before they make the call. They'll rip all these cabinets out of there and then say, hey, well, you know, the floor was installed underneath the cabinet, so we had to rip out the cabinets. If you, if you have a photo showing that there's no, the flooring is not underneath these cabinets and that it's just only subfloor or just plywood or whatever, 
then you've, you go a long way to helping out the desk adjuster. So photos like that are critical, right? So we have this vent here. I actually did get a photo of that and it's this one. So this is in the kitchen, this photo here. And I'm gonna show you a close up of this. And you can see that we're looking at plywood. We're looking at, that's not uh, laminate flooring. This is, the, this is the vent that is underneath the sink. And I show my, my basically the flashlight on my, my iPhone underneath here and then took this photo. And it shows pretty clearly and pretty convincingly that there's no flooring underneath the cabinets. So this is gonna go a long way to helping you out when you write your estimate and also the desk adjuster later when they have to reopen this because the contractor's saying, well, the flooring went underneath the cabinets. Clearly it didn't. Or if it did, you know, you have evidence that it did. So um, in the crawl space, this was a leak. That's water on my fingers. Um, so this is water in the um, HVAC. I can hit Alt N in here as well and go to the next, the next photo. And this is gonna be crawl overview, okay? There's probably, there probably should be a, uh, several more photos in here, but this is to give you an example of, oh, this is, this is not. So, well, <laughs> this is my uh, receipt for the ferry. I had to take a ferry um, over to this, where this house was, which was on an island up in, in the Pacific Northwest. And I was able to add this amount to my invoice um, because obviously I couldn't, I can't swim there and I'm not going to pay my, out of my own pocket to go look at a claim. So this is something that gets reimbursed by the particular company that I was, I was working for. So you want to have documentation like that in there as well. So pretty, pretty much, I mean, this is pretty much all there is to it. Importing photos. You can take one single photo just to show you and drag it around, right? If I want to move the risk photo to there, which I wouldn't, but if you wanted to, um, and you can reorder these in any way you want to. And if I hadn't have been talking, I would have been done with this several minutes ago. We want to take as many photos as necessary to tell the story of the claim. We don't need to take 10,000 photos. More is not better, okay? So the other thing we want to look at here is I'm going to go to the print preview. You click on the print button. And I'm going to take a look at the images. So I'm going to, I'm going to check all these off. Actually, usually we want to look at uh, this final draft with without removal depreciation is usually the report that they want to see. But I'm going to click all these off so that you can just see the photos and what those look like. So I'm going to click images and then hit view. And here you've got your photos, right? Uh, one cool little trick that you can do over here on this left side is you can click on any one of these thumbnails and jump to any particular uh, image that you want to. And then once you're in there, you can click on the screen and drag it around to take a look at it, right? And then you can pinch and, and, pinch and pull, you know, like you can on, on most modern computers. So you can do that to kind of zoom in on your images. Um, if you wanted to export a photo only report, like if, if one of your reporting uh, requirements was is that you needed to before you could upload the rest of the file you had to upload a preliminary that included photos or that was only photos you can go up here under print you click on print well, I'm going to close out of this you click on print so many things you can do in, under this print button and then the very first thing is estimate reports which is going to show what I just showed and this will also show any estimate items that if you were showing the insured or talking to the contractor and you want to show them your estimate, then you could hit view and it would show everything, right? So you put this next tab over, it's called claim reports. You can also click on photo report in this long list of things here and you can view that as well, right? And this is basically the same photo report that we just looked at, right? And you, and you notice here, rear, no damage found at time of inspection. Um, you can export this to your desktop and then email it to people if you need to. That's two ways that you can export photos. You can either go into claim reports and scroll down to photo reports and then export here, or 
and this is a little bit more time consuming, you can uncheck these things. Which obviously takes a while and you can export here, but this gives you the choice of you, you want to export PDF file because you have to probably set this up. I'm, I'm going to go for the simplest possible thing um, again. So, and don't forget, always be resequencing line numbers. Um, you'll be prompted whenever, through, throughout you know, the, pro, the workflow in Xactimate to resequence your line numbers, but it's always good practice to always be clicking that. When you're evaluating a tool to add to your storm kit, try not to be swayed by flashy cool gadgets that you think you want to have, but on whether or not these tools will move the needle on your earnings. And, and your earnings depend on quality and speed. Question of the day, how long does it take you to import and label photos? Do you have a workflow for getting smartphone images into Xactimate? Let's talk about it in the comments below. For much more information about crushing it as an independent adjuster, head on over to adjustertv.com. If you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by subscribing to Adjuster TV on YouTube. Wondering what to watch next? There are tons more videos right here on the Adjuster TV YouTube channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.